Merry Christmas to all of you. I hope you have a wonderful day with your, your loved ones, your families, your significant others. Uh, we wanted to share a special Christmas Day video with you. It's an interview with the third biggest selling male artist of the 20th century, just behind Elvis Presley and Frank Sinatra. It's not Christmas without his magical voice. Coming up, he's going to tell us about his famous Christmas record and the story behind an all-time number one hit that is now considered a highlight of the great American songbook and how this song caused him to almost get in a car wreck the first time he heard it on the radio because he was so excited. I'm telling you, this interview is magic. Again, Merry Christmas from Professor Rock. Come on, it's lovely weather for us. We ride together with you. Merry Christmas, your Christmas album. How wonderful to be able to sing a song that every year, for thousands of years, people will be singing along to Winter Wonderland. Tonight, we're happy tonight, walking in the winter wonderland. It's not Christmas without Johnny, without Bing, without Nat King Cole. My and blessing was uh, after I had made maybe four uh, recordings that had become uh, successful, I said, I want to make a Christmas album for my mom. <laughs> and uh, some, God bless uh, Percy Faith, he was uh, quite wonderful. Yeah. And Glenn Osser, oh, Glenn Osser, what a pal he was. Um, and uh, they both stepped forward. Uh, I was so young, and I had uh, I had enthusiasm, but not much, uh, no no restraints on this enthusiasm, <laughs> and that's what I learned to sing in tandem with an orchestra from Glenn Osser and Percy Faith. In the lane, snow is glistening, a beautiful sight. I'd be singing over here, and they'd be conducting the orchestra, and I'd do something, and Percy would go. And i oh, oh. <laughs> And I'd, I'd say, can I do that again, please? And he'd smile. That's it. <laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. He said something to me that was quite wonderful. It almost tantamount to just sing the song, don't do any fancy, just sing it. Sing it straight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, it was the best advice I ever got as a singer. Well, uh, there's that magic of Christmas and the magic of your voice. You put the two together and it's going to work. I was really, so really well. happy that we had success with the Christmas music for my mom, of course. <laughs> you know, you want to do everything in the world for your mom. And she, <laughs> that was the time that she made it so special. My mom and my dad worked for everybody all the time. They cooked for everybody all the time. They did extraordinary things for everybody else. And they only had a few moments for us uh, uh, at home to do some of those things. And they were wonderful cooks. And uh, of course, they. Uh, when I did this Christmas music, uh, all I thought about was my mom's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, Christmas. At this moment right now in the present, what are you most grateful for? I'm grateful for my friendships uh, with all of the people who've gone before me as far as musicians and uh, people who are involved with music. And I'm grateful for the kindness that they've shown me. I am a product of so many, so many gifted people who have, uh, who have helped me. And I think we all are. We, yeah. we could really go back and count, uh, you know, all the people who have helped us. Christmas, Christmas. My dad and my mom were my best pals. And one day my dad came to our little basement flat in San Francisco with a bunch of, I thought it was, uh, was, it was wood, planks and things. Yeah. And uh, he put it together and... Uh, in the middle of the night, or maybe two or three in the morning, uh, for the first time, my brothers and sisters and I heard the piano played. Dad worked all day like mom did, yeah. and, uh, and he was in his work clothes. He was a painter. He painted people's houses. And he was all with his paint stuff on, and he was putting this stuff together. And uh, it took a long time, and, and we all went to bed, and uh, we were awakened by this sound that we'd never heard playing the piano. We don't have a piano. Well, we did then. 
we never knew that dad could play the piano and that was that was the genesis of my music from that time on i sat by my father's knee and listened to him play the piano and uh, and sing songs and over the years i think i've recorded everything that pop ever sang when he was <laughs> yeah at that point wow that's so that's it. how it all started The friendship that I had with Robert Allen, who wrote, uh, it's not for me to say, just bumped into him actually uh, on the streets in New York. And he uh, introduced himself, said that he had uh, uh, been the writer of uh, uh, The Four Lads, big yeah. hits at the time. And uh, we uh, struck up a relationship and uh, he presented me with the, the first song, It's Not For Me To Say. Uh, we recorded it and it was uh, uh, not, it, it was about six months, I think, before I finally heard it in a taxi cab I was in. I went crazy and almost, <laughs> you know, had a car wreck because I said, that's it, that's my song. I'm leaving it on the radio. <laughs> And after the success of It's Not For Me To Say, uh, Bob Allen, uh, who was uh, uh, a very popular composer at the time, oh, yeah. said, I got another song for you. And I go, oh, well, it'll never be as, as, good. as good or <laughs> as big as It's Not For Me To Say. Oh, yeah. Well, he got it. Was. He said, chances are, because I wear a silly grin. And I went, oh, that's nice. That's nice. And then, of course, you know. Oh, wow. But he was uh, quite quite important to oh, my yeah. career. Chances are, cause I wear a silly grin. But chances are, let's talk about that. Inducted in the Grammy Hall of Fame and number one song. The thing that I learned about uh, from Bob is that these people who write all these wonderful songs for people like myself are working craftsmen who have lots and lots and lots of background as far as what they do. And to have them choose that song for me, they had to have something uh, uh, almost like a wisdom that I didn't have. I mean, how did they know that uh, that song would be for me? There are certain people who are really, really talented in so many different ways. And, uh, and of course, I've, I've met so many of them and I've learned from them. And the fact that people have listened to my music over the years. That's something that I don't think uh, too many of us who do what I do are aware of it's not in the front of your mind because you're so busy doing what you're doing. And then when someone says that they heard your stuff, you go, oh, really? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's a joy, of course. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blessing. Chances are you think my heart your... What do you remember about recording that? Because there's so many vocal nuances, especially that last line. When you're singing a song like that, John, what is your inspiration? You There's seem a certain to... amount of innocence that goes with all of these first recordings that I did. I was gang, I was gangbusters. I yes, oh, I'll sing it. And so what they did mostly is put the reins on me. Uh, uh, Mitch Miller stood next to me while I was singing. And I don't recommend this for any singer in the world. <laughs> but I was a kid and I went along with it. He would tap me on the back, sing on the beat. You're a jazzer, no, 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 you don't do that. He, because he wanted he, you to sing it so that people could yes. sing along. Yes, Yeah. He, his big phrase, I want everybody to think that they can sing it just as good as you can. And I said, and I got accustomed <laughs> to that and I understood what he was talking about, but it took me a long time. Uh, I will never get over that. And they said, he tapped you on the back while you were singing? I said, yes. <laughs> he wanted me to sing well, he must have on knew. the beat. Chances are you believe the stars. I had to learn that there are parameters uh, when you're singing 
uh, whatever you're doing. Uh, and uh, don't wander out into somebody else's parameters, you know. It, it sing, sing your part, sing what the man wrote, you yeah. know, and then, uh, you know, we'll see how, how it goes. That's why Cole Porter probably loved you, because he was not a fan of Sinatra, because Sinatra would always change his stuff, yes. and that made yeah. him mad. <laughs> yes. I used to read and about I that. And I had to learn that, that, that those people who write the songs want you to sing it that way, you know. <laughs> I sang a song from a Broadway production called Gypsy, uh, written, uh, of course, by uh, uh, Stephen Sondheim. And uh, I met him once coming out of the, uh, uh, the recording studio. Actually, I, I, I met Bernstein first, and Bernstein said, uh, oh, yes, John, he says, I heard you sing Stephen's song. And he says, I like the way you changed that around. And what I did is I sang it. I, I juxtaposed one of his uh, uh, melodies and uh, small world isn't it that's the note I should have sang I said small world isn't it that comes later uh, which I finally learned <laughs> small world isn't it but I was a kid you know and yeah. you're so excited about doing it and you get I yeah. got so many notes wrong but at least they were right in context. Well, chances are it was such a great vulnerability to your vocal on that. Just such an innocence. And I love the last line after the break. And you come in with the piano. And that's just a beautiful, my favorite part of it. It's an innocence. And not that the 1950s, that things bad didn't happen in the 1950s because we've come a long way since then. But... It was a simpler time in terms of music, for sure. A wonderful innocence, as you say, uh, and that innocence has to be, uh, if, if you meet up with the right person and they give you parameters. Yeah. Uh, we had three hours, for instance, to do four songs. And of wow. course, yes, and, and that went on for years. If you didn't get it done, it, you, you yes. released them. Well, they release them anyway. Yeah. Whether, and, and oh my gosh, there's so many that I yeah. got wrong. And I said, oh, you're going to release it anyway? And I said, yes. <laughs> but they didn't say that. You just went away. And, and you ended up, you know, hearing that and saying, oh my God, they released that song. Oh my God. <laughs> well, and chances are it was using Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And there's a new Spielberg documentary that's out about Steven Spielberg, the filmmaker, and it, he talks about when the aliens came, how would we communicate? And he first thought math, but he said, no, I think it would be music because music is something that touches all of us and it's more emotion and feeling. And he used it in that part where it was an appropriate choice for him because he used it when the little boy met the alien. that says chances are. It's a thrill of my life when <laughs> I, I actually met... Uh, um, Steven uh, Spielberg? Uh, yes, uh, at some function, maybe a year before that was released. And he said, oh yeah, here's one, uh, you wanted your songs in my, uh, my film. And I forgot all about it. And then when I saw the film, this wonderful, wonderful film, it was a, the most exciting thing that ever happened to me when I saw that. And I must have gone back to that theater a thousand times. It's also been used in humor. I mean, you were on The Simpsons and they used it. Your line was trimming the hedge and killing the gophers when you were on The yes, Simpsons. Yes, <laughs> I, I went and did the something uh, recently uh, about that and uh, sat down and signed a lot of autographs. Give this hedge a trim, and I will kill the golfers too. Well, in Diner, did you see Diner when they had that argument, that movie? Yes, oh, that was wonderful, and I <laughs> met the, the, the director. Yeah, Barry Levinson. Barry, yeah. oh yeah. When you want to make out, who do you make out to? Sinatra or Mathis? It's irrelevant, I won't answer. Mathis. I never thought of my music as being romantic. It's just music, yeah. you know, and, uh, <laughs> and then make out music. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. got to play something. You know, the joy 
that I get uh, and that I did get while my parents were alive was when they heard my music played, you know, in the movies or on the radio or TV something. Or, and, yeah. and of course, they are the genesis of this little boy who they heard around the house all the time singing. And now it's going to go on to the airwaves. And yeah. uh, so the, the thing in my life that I'm oh so grateful for is that my parents live long enough to, to see my success. Oh, please.